Hey, Daddy. Uh. I don't know that I will get to really do other things, but I guess I could be able to keep playing playing pool. I love to play pool. Yeah. I still do that. I used to be I used to be quite good at it. To continue to be able to walk uh, without falling over, uh, and and I'm doing better with all of that. I was going to say Alaska, but I, I really think Russia would be a place, but yeah. but I, I can't cross the borders and things and because of the, so their very restrictive, dishonest policies that they have now. Uh, and that's that's disappointing to me. But I, I, I always thought that would, that would be something that I would have to go in that direction. Because then you can travel all the way across Russia and, 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 and meet all kinds of different people that I, that I have not, and I don't, I don't, it would be nice to try to communicate with them, especially if you're not going to be able to speak their language because there's a bunch of different dialects that go across there. Fifteenth century, I think. I'm not exactly sure why that appealed to me, but but it does appeal to me to say, gee, that's before before people really recognized that there was more to the world than themselves. Well, I that that, that best friend was Larry Ryan, and I did get into mischief with him. I swiped his girlfriend. <laughs> so, so that, that's probably mischief that I got into. That he would go, well, I'm not too happy about that. But. <laughs> John Kennedy being assassinated. Because his family went on. They didn't let it stop them. That terrible, terrible blow and have it happen to them again and still go on and do some really functional things, which they did, which is an inspiration to us to say, you know, you can do this too. You can still accomplish something really good if you keep trying. I think it was civil rights because it was important that other people were going to get a chance at so many things that they were, they were denied either by law or by the way people were trained to react to them. And maybe you didn't really understand how bad it was for them at that time. And I think people are definitely, they, yeah, they're treated differently just because, because they're different or they, they come from a different race or they come from a different side of the city often therefore you don't get to go to a good school or you know and and actually see that was done i mean believe me that was done you know where you go holy cow how can that be the case that probably affected me more to to actually get to witness people start to have success with that martin luther king kind of deal in spite of everything, they kept persevering, and that's the important thing. Just because, just because they smack you down, get up again. And a good lesson, and, and it's a good lesson that I was able to really apply a lot of times in my life. Get up again. Uh, 
somebody will find some value in you. Maybe I can do something. Maybe I can participate in that. Uh, getting a chance to realize it later and maybe to, to affect how some people are dealt with today is, is a good thing. Opportunity is the, is the key thing there to me. It's, it's great to have, have a chance to be a, an influence and help to anybody, really. The ability to recognize that the other person is just as important as you are and has something that they can offer that maybe you could use and you could share with other people. And I think that would be, that would be really, I think that, that would be great if that would happen. I think that's really, that's really important. The thing that I, that I would, would like to share is that it's, it's good to try something different if, if, that you would like to do. That, that, that's something that's coming from inside you that you want to try and you could try it without, without having the fear that you're going to fail or that you're going to disappoint somebody else because you, whatever you do, it's going to disappoint somebody else. But do it so that, it, it, that you feel some satisfaction that you have done that thing. If you fail, it's, it's certainly okay to get to try again. Be willing to give yourself another chance because you'll find something. You will find something that when you try it, you'll like it. <laughs> That's pretty good. If you like it, that really counts for a lot, you know. So I've, I've been fortunate to find, get a chance to do things that I enjoy doing them now. I enjoy gardening. I enjoy mowing the lawn. <laughs> That's one of the lessons certainly of my life. It doesn't always work out. Look at bad things are going to happen to you that you don't like, but you can overcome them. You can, you can go on, you can find another way around, you can wiggle around this some way and still do something that has real value to you. It's a, a, a little selfish sense of self-accomplishment when you do that. It's okay to do a good thing and not worry about whether you're getting credit for it. That's, that's the big thing. My children, so many. If I, if I spend it on them or in some way, now I can share in that and get, I can get some, I can get some value out of it while they're getting some value out of it. And that's, that's, that's a pretty good thing because you're getting to share something with somebody. Sometimes it takes you a long time to realize that they were there trying to do the best that, the best that they could. And sometimes that wasn't quite as good as you would like them to be able to do. Uh, I know that was the case for my father. And years later, uh, I, I was, I mean, I, it was a certain point in my life that I'd walk down the street and, and cross the street so I wouldn't have to walk by him. You know, just wouldn't want to have to interact at all with them. And it, it took me a long time to realize that that might be real important to him. So at some point, I, I, I did interact with him. And he didn't, he didn't live very long after that. And I thought, boy, I got lucky to be able to do that and to do something that made him get some peace before he died. Hmm, that, you know, that's a really good question. Yeah, no, I, 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 I don't think I was smart enough to be scared. Uh, <laughs> my first wife was a uh, professional woman and uh, I don't know if she was 
financially smarter than me, which she ended up with all my money. I know <laughs> that. The children that I ha that I had, uh, some of, some of them are still alive, which is good. <laughs> all of them are still alive. <laughs> That's true. Yes. Yeah, and one of them's coming to visit me up in the, in Pennsylvania. Jesse, he's the oldest one. He was a very good and an excellent musician. I actually got to play with him at, uh, at some point. He ended up having a lot of drinking problems. He would call and ask me for help financially, uh, which I did a, 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 a couple of times, but it was the wrong thing to do. I finally went down and uh, tried to counsel him in person and didn't seem to work well, but he says, but I remembered it years later, and he said it was the right thing to do, and he finally did it. He's able to work a full-time job, and so well that they promoted him, and they, I mean, just it turned out so well for him. Nadia, yes, yes, yeah. And I think that that's liberating, getting to, getting to do something that I always thought was good for people to do, and I got to do it. I got the chance to do it. I think that that's really important because she's still alive, and she was able to have children that they, they end up, by their choice, relating to me. Getting to uh, take the bus to school and make sure my brother got to school and getting some good sense of caring about your your family. Uh, sometimes later you find out it was important to them too. It was difficult growing up as a child uh, because we were really relatively poor. I worked at the, at the Maid of the Mist, which is where they uh, ran the boats down right up into the, into the falls. I was always the youngest kid in my high school because my mother stuck me in the school by fibbing. It was always more difficult. I, I loved to play basketball. You never get to be the, have a starting role. You get to, to be a backup kid. And I got to be a backup kid, and I and I eventually ended up getting getting a, a chance to take a scholarship exam, and I got an excellent, a really excellent score, and I was able to get into Manhattan College in New York City, which was which was really impressive. I I went to a. a a club that was in, I think, Youngstown, New York, which is further down, almost to Lake Ontario. Um, and they, they had like a, like a ladies' night. They would all get in free, mm -hmm. and the guys would have to to pay, and I never had much money, but I had a friend, Larry Ryan, uh, had, we were poor enough, both of it, but we had a hitchhike and walk, and all the way down there, by the time you get there, you go, oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to do anything here, and, uh, you know? You go in, and uh, they would get to ask the guys to, to dance, and this, this one asked me, and, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to do it because I, I think I was, uh, I wouldn't say I was sexually innocent, but this woman, she was a 48 D. I mean, but she was a, out, she was, and very bright, very smart. And she was my first sexual experience, real sexual experience. Experience. I mean, I can remember this to this day. Uh, we, we, we went to the 
to the beach at the, at the lake. And we're sitting there with our feet in the water, and she says, well, you want to have sex? And I'm going, I don't know. <laughs> I says, explain this to me. And so she did. <laughs> <laughs> and, I thought, uh, and, and boy, believe me, my, my <laughs> ability to come to a, an ejaculatory point <laughs> was, was not inhibited at all. And I thought, oh my God, when it happened, I went, holy cow. <laughs> I mean, I thought I was going to lose my mind, but it was so nice. I went, gee, this, this is all right. <laughs> you know, so I, I started to, to date her. And uh, and I and I didn't have a I, I know my mother didn't have a car my father didn't have a car but one of my uncles I I got to to borrow his car but I was just at a driving age and I didn't realize that when you go into Canada at that point you couldn't you couldn't have a, a, a like a, a driver's license at 16 and go that wouldn't count. So I, I went there, I didn't realize that I'm driving, and then the police stopped me, the, whatever the local provincial guys, and uh, I guess I had a good enough sob story that I just was too ignorant, I didn't know. Later on, uh, I would have to take the bus <laughs> in, in <laughs> Canada uh, up and go to the local bus station in, in uh, St. Catharines, and, and she would have to come and get me. It was a wonderful experience. Definitely teaching, I think, was my favorite that I got the most out of. I mean, I, I was most satisfied with that. Um, I was able to work a couple connections with, with people to have the new school certified to give a high school a degree and uh, we had some outstanding talented kids one black boy who was such a talented pianist he could write some music and he did but they they in the schools they wouldn't let him play any of the things that he wanted to that he wanted to play I was able to get him into the school so that he would be able to play the music that he wanted to play and get a high school diploma. And he did. And the, the one girl who, she ended up getting a region scholarship after when she finally opened up and did all this stuff. She was so good at what she w was doing. She just didn't want to do it. But uh, she finally did it. She finally did it, and went on. And I and I was able to help her get into a college in New York State. That was that was really really good. Uh, we had one Jewish boy didn't speak. He didn't say anything. Like he must be stupid. Turns out he wasn't really stupid. He just was choosing not to speak because he didn't have anything to say to you because he was way smarter than you were. <laughs> um, he finally talked to me because I convinced him that I was just as smart as he was. <laughs> and maybe smarter because I got him to say something. He eventually did, ended up getting a high school diploma, moving on in life, and, and I was really happy with that. I think he finally, he even ended up going back to Israel because that's what he wanted to do, to find out his roots. Because I kept telling him that I, wanted, I knew some things about where I came from and I was going to find out more as I was going to interview my father who was born in Austria and my, and my grandfather who was a butcher in Caledonia, New York, and I had never met him. And eventually I ended up going there and, and meeting him. He was really old by that point. <laughs> and, 
Yes, that, that, was, that was certainly one of my proudest moments, for sure. Being able to help those kids. I had a, I had a job as a, I guess you would call it a sub-chemist. I, I, I worked with these two PhDs guys. And that's where I, I ended up getting on a patent, having a patent, which was, which was pretty exciting. Getting people to share their work experiences. When I worked for this company that had these three different divisions, they had a program where they, were, they would go and, and inspect their own division and, and other divisions. They never ever mentioned talking to the people who actually had to do the work. Mm. Well, how does it make them feel better about themselves that they're working for you? Mm. And I thought that's that's kind of really important. And I got to buy a, a really excellent old house. There was a certain section of the city that was close to the, to the music hall, Klein Hands Music Hall. And it was a three and a half story house with a sub basement besides. And, uh, and it's, I mean, it was gigantic. I think it was like 40, 42 rooms. I mean, it was like huge and big, 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 big rooms. And, and, a, and a couple of fireplaces that ran, or, or, or chimneys with fireplaces on every floor that ran all the way up because originally it was so old that they, that's the way, the way they originally heated the house, mm -hmm. which was amazing to me. Um, but that was, that was a really interesting place. And the woman um, that lived right next door, she was very old and, and needed help with things. And I think she was 90 some years old. And I, I couldn't believe that she was still in this house. Uh, but she was, and, and she was, and she uh, actually ended up giving giving me uh, some things, some furniture stuff. She had things that she bought when she first came to the country. I mean, I thought, holy mackerel, made by made by famous people, and I actually got one of those pieces. You seem to be the type of person that thinks about the other guy a lot with the kids and these workers. You want to see how other people are feeling or, or yes. doing. That seems very important to you. It's a nice quality to have, by the way. Um, it is. <laughs> right. That I can recover from being slept down, uh, from having a from having a failure and going, well, you know what, at some point after that, I can recover and do something productive. I was, I was trying to come up with a job. I remember this guy interviewed me. Uh, he took me down to, to a, a totally different place. And they they, op they made me an offer that was really good in, in, uh, in Texas, I think it was, right? Jeanette? I think it was Texas. Yeah, I had, uh, well, that's when Jeanette was born, and that's when I had a motorcycle. I actually got to, to, to see her born because my, uh, my wife was, was having some difficulties and she was more nervous about things. She was the, it's the only child that she's had. And we got permission for me to be right in there with her. And that, that was, that. Well, I guess that was the awe-inspiring thing. I'm going, wow, I got to see this happen. And, and, this, and she just looked, she looked really good as a baby right there. Just as just hatched, I guess is what you would call it. And go, holy cow. <laughs> What, what have I been lucky enough to be part of and participate in? Eventually bought a, a pretty, a pretty, actually a pretty nice little house was, that was actually ne next door to one of the nurses that was there at the, at the, 
at the hospital when she was born, and that's how we got a lead on to that. But gee, how lucky. Uh, and we always had a great connection, and I always said that's because, that's because we were so, so close. That was, she was always able to get, get me to let her do the things that she wanted to participate in and experience some things in life. She went, she went, wanted to know why she couldn't go out toward the swimming pool in the winter. When she, I remember she had a, a winter coat and jacket. And, and I said, no, we can't do that right now. Said, but she always, was, she always kind of wanted to do whatever the hell she wanted to do, which is, I guess, still true. And she went out there and she fell into the pool. And I thought, she's going to drown. And I had to go and jump in and grab her and haul her out by the, by the, the, the top of the, the jacket, the, the hood. And I got it. I didn't think I was going to get it. I got it with my fingertips. And I thought, i got to get her out of there now, not, not uh, half a minute from now, because she's going to start breathing <laughs> in the water. So, but I did. I whooped her right out of there. Which I was, that's why I, my, that's why I, my shoulder doesn't work <laughs> So she, work she permanently hurt her shoulder. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. most challenging, I think, was finally giving up, absolutely giving up alcohol, giving up any drinking whatsoever, which is much later in my life that I did that. I mean, I could, I could have some wine and tell you where it was, where, where they grew it and what year it was. I mean, I, I really could. While we don't always see eye to eye on everything, we don't, don't hate each other either. We, we support each other. Uh, we make an effort to help the other person do, do the thing that they need to do, want to do. She and I are able to work through things, even though at some point in that, when uh, you, go, you get too so aggravated that you, you just want to tell the person to go jump in the lake, uh, which we have done to each other <laughs> a couple of times, but we haven't done that. We're able to go, you know what, we can learn something from each other. Even at this stage of our lives, we can do something that is good for the other person. She's, I mean, she's got me out here. You know, that's, she made damn sure it was going to happen, whether I liked it or not. So, which is often the way we interact. Yeah. But, a little bossy, but sometimes you have to be bossy with me. I mean, m more often than not, you go, you're going to do this whether you like it or not. Okay, well then I guess my choice is I'll, I'll like it because that's that's a good way to go. And better to like it than not to like it. Uh, and that, that has worked out very well. It's, and, and it's worked well for us. I get to talk to her on the phone while I'm out here and that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. And, and she was happy that I was happy, and I was happy that she was happy that I was happy. <laughs> which, which was a little redundant, but she appreciated that. <laughs> so, yeah. I still have one, I still have one of my classical guitars. And I, and, and I like that, I wish I could have been better at that. Uh, And I could never, I couldn't, one of the things that, things that I've had to do is, was cut my nails. And I used to, I used to like to be able to play with my own fingernails, which can't, I can't do that anymore. So I, mean, so I stopped doing that. And I, I, I have some little finger picks that I can put on, but it, it's, not, it's not the same. It doesn't feel the same. I, and I just don't, and I don't feel very, like I do it very well, and I don't like to do it not so well. I want it to be better than I turned out to be. Yeah, yeah. 
I guess I, I guess I, I would I would have liked to not have have had uh, this the surgery stuff to my hands where they just didn't work as well. So I mean that's my hands don't open up anymore. I wanted to be a good parent. I got what I wanted. I think I did. And I'm grateful for it. I'm so lucky that you're my dad. I'm glad you feel that way. A teacher. because you can help other people do the thing that they need to do, that they choose to do, that they want to do, and that's good for them. And sometimes you can help them make a good choice, which is, which is part of teaching too, I guess. Be, you can be a, an example. That was probably true. <laughs> that I've been able to interact with people who would put up with me. <laughs> yeah, my brother just died, and uh, he recorded something that he wanted his wife to make sure that I heard afterwards, that he was grateful. That affected me a lot. Still does. That's a big deal. And I'm I'm grateful for that. I think not much better thing that he could have done than let me know. I'm grateful to have had the chance to do this and to share it with people who have important goals, know what they are, and are bound and bent they're going to do. I think that's, that's a key thing. Gee, how lucky I was to share that. I guess I better not say it anymore. <laughs> but yes, I, this has been a this has been a wonderful experience for me.